Hi, this is Don Garbutt speaking. This tutorial is about the logic environment, specifically using the logic transformer. Now, the logic transformer is a pretty unusual gadget. It can change any kind of incoming MIDI data to any different type of outgoing MIDI data. And you can use a lot of them all at the same time. In the environment, you see this little cable point here. Now, what I'm going to do is load up a monitor and the monitor object is a very handy object. It shows us the messages that are being created from source devices. Now, for starters, if I were to move the fader, there are actually messages called controller messages. The controller messages beside the little icon here of controller, you see a channel message here. Now, this isn't this quite the same as MIDI channels. These channels refer to the order of objects on the channel strip. It'll make sense in a minute when I get a little further into the discussion. Now, the instrument will generate messages too. For instance, we have a filter cutoff point. If you watch here, you'll see they are F-type messages. Now, this is a logic term called fader. Fader, and they are what we'll continue to use the word channel, channel 2 messages. You see a parameter number and a value here. We'll get to these in a second. And if we were to have a plug-in on the channel strip, for instance, I'll just load an EQ here. The EQ is the next object in our list. And the EQ, for instance, if I were to go to, say, the high-pass filter and move its cutoff point, makes fader messages as channel 3 messages. So we see that uh, if I go to another parameter, say the low-pass filter, and move it, well, it's fader channel 3 parameter number 29. Now, what we can do is we can get a software fader in the environment here. So I'll go to fader call up a fader and give it a little stretch adjustment there. Now the software fader, it has one of those little cable points. You attach the cable point to the channel strip by just reaching over, touching the channel strip. Okay. Now if you look over here, you can see the characteristics of the fader object. The characteristic that we're interested in is the fact that it defaults to a controller. Now, as a controller, it also defaults to channel one and controller number seven. So if I were to move this fader, we'd immediately see it also controlling the channel one target, the volume control. Okay, but that's not what we're interested in controlling. So what I'm going to do is change the type of message from controller to fader. Now remember we were making F type messages, fader messages. Okay, so if I switch that to fader, and if I change the channel number, well, I could control the instrument here, but we're going to kind of move into the processor chain here into the plugins. I'm going to control parts of the EQ here. So we'll start off, we'll say the fader object will generate fader type messages. Channel three, parameter number one. And you now see that the fader is controlling the target. Very nice. Okay. Now back to the transformer because what we can do with this type of array is we can have the fader control multiple targets, multiple parameters on multiple devices. Okay, so we can do that by getting a transformer. I'll attach the next available cable point to the transformer and attach the transformer output to the channel strip just like we did the fader. We're going to use the transformer to generate these type of messages here. Fader, channel 3, parameter 29. And we'll get the low-pass filter cutoff point. Now to do that, we open up the transformer, double-click. We'll start from here. Actually, this is the starting material and some sort of logic math type conditions, which we will brush the surface of that. And the result treatment that we want to perform on the incoming material. So we'll start with the fact that all messages from this object 
Right now, these are fader messages. We set that up in advance. We set it over here. So these are fader messages. We don't have to change the type of messages or select from a bunch of different messages coming in. If we wanted to, we could say everything that equals, and then under here, see there's a new box here, under here we could choose what type of message we're interested in. If our input contained many different types of MIDI data here, we could select which type of data we want to operate on. The channel number is going to stay the same. It's channel three, it's this device. So we're not gonna mess with the channel number. We're gonna let all the channel messages that are coming out of here stay as they are. But here, what we're going to do is change the parameter number from one to 29. As I wiggle the cutoff point, you see it, we want parameter number 29. So this is parameter number here. If we go to in fact, we could even leave it at all. We could say all parameter numbers that were parameter number one can be, and now we have a bunch of mathematical operations that we can perform. They can be fixed as parameter 29 messages. Changing the parameter number in this category means that all parameter number one values will be changed through the transformer to become parameter 29 values. Now, if I move the fader, you can see that the two cutoff points are moving. In the next tutorial, I'll show how to use a software fader combined with a bunch of transformers to control processors on an auxiliary bus, while at the same time controlling some parameters on a couple of synthesizers. Thanks for watching.